this is Stephen Platinum, your friend in wrestling with Platinum versus All Out 2021. Holy guacamole. Um, boy, did that live up to advanced hype. I'm just going to get into it. Um, before, um, let's call it the buy-in. Um, we had Private Party, Matt Hardy, and TH2 against Wheeler, Utah, Chuck Taylor, Orange Cassidy, um, <laughs> Luchasaurus, and Jungle Boy. Let me just call this match what it is. It's the right match to have to not open a pay-per-view, but to be the kind of pre-pay-per-view match. It was silly. Um, it felt of little consequence. It was basically everybody get your stuff in, have chicken fights, and all kinds of ridiculous stuff. At the end of the day, tail whip happened, snare trap happened to Angelico, um, and they got the win. The baby faces did. But then butcher attacks, uh, and all kinds of stuff goes down. Cool. Um, then the top team idiot guys in the crowd and yelling on the mic and Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page are there and I just can't help but go, why do we continue to give this guy mic time? But that's just my opinion. Now we get into the pay-per-view. Open with Eddie Kingston against Miro. A very well-paced match. In some ways, the best match Miro has had in terms of just a regular match that I thought was paced well, made sense. Good false finishes, as much as you could possibly do. I don't think anybody really was of the mind that Eddie Kingston was going to win this match. Miro having to cheat a little bit to get the win with the low kick, followed by that jumping thrust kick that looked absolutely brutal. Miro gets your win. Second match, Satoshi Kojima against John Moxley. A, ver a match that started off... Not great, and then ended up being really, really good. Um, Moxley winning with the two paradigm shifts. Um, this pay-per-view really started in a place, usually AEW is all about like start off like gangbusters and then try to maintain dip and then rise up at the end. This one actually was a build throughout the pay-per-view. The first one that they've had like that, tr the very traditional kind of feel. Um, then the big news is Minoru Suzuki comes out and him and Moxley go at it for a little while. Minoru hitting that brutal looking pile driver to lay out John Moxley. We get a video package highlighting our next match, Chris Statlander and Britt Baker. A very good match. One of the best women's matches they've had in AEW, especially without any kind of gimmick attached to it. Really, really good stuff here. Um, Britt Baker eventually wins with the lock jaw. Alex Marvez talks to Andrade. I don't really care about this, but um, apparently he and Pac um, rescheduled their match for Dynamite. The Dynamite looks pretty gangbusters, by the way. A video package highlighting Lucha Brothers against Young Bucks, and we have that match in a cage. Um, what can I say? A lot of people I knew were messaging me and texting me saying this is the best cage match they ever saw. It's the best tag team match of the year. It's fantastic. Go fucking see it. Um, even with all the people who came out at the end, like Adam Cole and <laughs> Brian Danielson, I still might put up the screen capture that I took of uh, the end of that match um, just because I thought it was just so wonderful. It was really great. The Women's Battle Royal, um, as well booked out as any of these AEW Battle Royals that I've seen, um, they've never had the thing work so well where they bring people out four or five at a time. Um, that's never worked so well. Um, Ruby Soho, with the song, of course, coming out, being treated like a star, being so happy. Her and Thunder Rosa are the right last two. It looked phenomenal. She looked like a star, and instantly the AEW women's roster feels elevated. Just great stuff all around, and this pay-per-view is showing signs of being incredibly great. Uh, match number six. I mean, when this match is happening mid-card, uh, MJF against the possible retirement of Chris Jericho. Um, from MJF's entrance, mocking Chris Jericho's Millennium Man entrance um, to kind of screw the troll crowd was great. Uh, the finish where MJF hits Jericho with the bat and then the Judas effect gets the pin. Jericho gets his foot on the ropes, but the referee doesn't see it. 
uh, it's one of those finishes that put everything in doubt. Uh, and then the referee overturning it, which is something that we never seen in AEW. So it was incredibly effective. And then Jericho winning with the walls of Jericho, making MJF tap out while MJF simultaneously not looking bad in the defeat. Very cleverly done. It's one of those booking things that WWE and others tend to overdo, but uh, used sparingly can be very effective. And it was effective here. Um, a little video package about Darby. Then we had Darby versus Punk. It was as good as advertised. And really, it was another match that was a testament to how to pace a match and how to make everything work for you in the best way possible. Punk wins with the go to sleep. They have a nice moment with Darby and Sting afterwards. They announced that Full Gear, the next pay-per-view, is November 13th. Uh, Paul White in QT is put on the altar of sacrifice. <laughs> and this match was no longer than it should have been. Paul White basically beating up a bunch of people, choke slamming QT and getting the win, and getting that match out of the way. Uh, a Mox promo. Uh, about how he wants Suzuki uh, on Wednesday, and so he's going to get him. And like I said, that Dynamite looks like it's going to be a fantastic follow-up. And then a promo with Malachi Black, where he's going to be taking on Dustin Rhodes. And this Dynamite suddenly is being promoted very well on their most-watched pay-per-view to date. Very smart. Um, and then finally, our main event, Christian against Omega. But shout out to both guys. I thought Christian has never looked better, frankly. It was just a great match, and the use of the table stuff I thought was very effective. At the end of the day, Omega wins with a um, one-winged angel from the second row. Brutal. Um, as they're celebrating uh, and beating Christian down and people come to try to help, like Jurassic Express, they beat them down too. Adam Cole's music hits as Kenny Omega brags that he's better than everybody and nobody's in a position to beat him. Adam Cole comes to the ring, the crowd loses it. It's one of those great reactions where they're thrilled that Adam Cole's there and then they just gave themselves over to, okay, Adam Cole's the big surprise, okay, great. And then Adam Cole kicks Jungle Boy in the head and goes, man, I'm, I'm with them. And the crowd is confused and disappointed um you could feel it like they've seen the big person come to the ring okay and they're disappointed and just when omega's about to close it out here comes uh, brian danielson gets in the ring and with the help of christian and uh Jurassic Express beats on the elite minus Omega, who wisely gets out of the ring, uh, beats on the gets him out of the ring and then uh, has a nice moment. So uh, you would say you would think overkill, but quite frankly, it's so wonderful seeing a group that feels the need to over deliver. It was something else. See this fucking pay-per-view. See it. Um, it really built and built and built and built. And uh, they put the spacer matches in in the right place. Um, AEW, usually you can kind of critique match placement, uh, but not tonight. They were firing on all cylinders.